What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Episode 24 today and we are back in the off season after that devastating loss in the Super Bowl to the Miami Dolphins. I was going to go ahead and sim pass this week before I started the video, but I saw that there were staff moves down here. So I figured we could take a look at those quick before we go ahead and advance to the official offseason. And it looks like a lot of coaches were let go this year, including Vic Fangio from the Broncos, Bruce Arians of the Bucks retired, Arthur Smith was fired from Atlanta, Robert Saleh, Saleh, so, <laughs> I said Saleh, I don't know how to say his name, but he, he was fired, Dan Campbell of the Lions was fired, Sean McVay. That's a very interesting one. Okay, I can see why, four and 13. Man, what happened to that team? Zach Taylor of the Bengals was fired. Cliff Kingsbury was fired. Sean McDermott was fired. Everybody was fired. So a lot of these teams are gonna look a heck of a lot different this year when it comes to their coaching staffs and maybe their approach and their schemes. Something that we'll have to keep an eye on. But now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and get to this off season. Just a quick recap to see what transpired in this league throughout the season. Maybe you came on, you know, halfway through it, the series and, the, and didn't get to see everything. Zachary Farr, of course, winning Super Bowl MVP after that incredible performance against us. And the Miami Dolphins end up taking home a Super Bowl. Daniil Hunter, he ended up winning the MVP of the NFL. Mike McCarthy ends up winning Coach of the Year. Derrick Henry winning Offensive Player of the Year. Of course, Hunter winning Defensive Player of the Year. Hunter Patton winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. And then Justin Gardner winning Defensive Rookie of the Year for the Chiefs. Okay, now we are at the re-sign phase. Let's take a look here at the mock draft to just see where they're expecting this draft to go. And now that we're going to be way back at pick 31. So they're expecting Daniel Matias, the quarterback out of LSU, to go number one overall to the Jets. I guess we'll have to take a look and see if Zach Wilson is what Zach Wilson is at. Because I mentioned before, I will go on teams to adjust what they do. And I will definitely be doing that if I feel the need is necessary because they have Zach Wilson. And if he's like an 80 something overall, I, I just don't think that that's very realistic. We'll see. And we'll look at his stats too to see if it makes sense. They have Joshua Clifton going to the Falcons, which honestly is a really good pick. They obviously need a quarterback. Kirk Cousins was their sort of, you know, bridge quarterback, but didn't have anybody there for him to bridge. So he was just sort of a stopgap for them. So a pick like Clifton would make huge sense for the Falcons. Kentrell Lucas going to the Lions. Man, that would really that would really grind my gears, man. I want him. <laughs> top receiver. Thielen's going to be going this year. I, you know, he's just one of those top receivers that I would like to have for us, but I don't think we're going to be able to get him. I was hoping for a split second that he had that negative story. I don't know. I was, I was thinking that he might fall because of it, and it just has not proven to be true. So he and I might end up going to the Lions. Eric Cook going to Denver, which is a little surprising as well. I guess I felt like Denver might need a quarterback. And Zach Hardeman going to the Rams the very next pick, which they probably do need one considering Stafford, I think, is 36-37. Lance Moreland, that was a corner that I was looking at. I look at I look at way too many of these guys that are way up the up the uh up on the top of the charts. You know? Like <laughs> I'm over here looking at top five picks in my own little scouting world. And we're at the pick 31 for crying out loud. Looks like, looks like a lot of defense in this draft. Antoine Giles, didn't they just get a good D tackle? Yeah, they did. Um, Pat something, can't think of his last name, but that would be a pretty nasty tandem there. Cam Peel, another good prospect. Jonathan Middleton. I know he had a couple of stories. Curtis Lynch, Sharif Norris, Tyler Beecham. A lot of wide receivers going. And that leaves us with Craig Whitley at left tackle. Which, on, on all honesty, you know, if all of these players do go, he might end up being the pick we have to go with. I mean, it says he's around three to four projection. I don't know why they would have him way up by, by us, though. That's a little weird. Maybe he got a story. We'll have to check on the stories. We will definitely do that. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at these uh, negotiations here. You know what I miss? They used to have a regression screen you could look at. So that whenever somebody regressed, you could see what they what, what they regressed to. And it seems like they took that away. And see what I tell you guys, 
I knew that Ken Walden would end up being a better a fullback than CJ Ham at the end of the season, which is why I re-signed Ken Walden. And unfortunately, we did see the last of CJ Ham in a Vikings uniform in this series. What did he go down to? Okay, so he lost 23 total. He lost two to catch in traffic, five to catching, two deep route, one injury, one medium, spectacular catch, four to release, one catch in traffic, one catching, deep route, release, medium, short, and then also speed. Dang, that's unfortunate. So now he's down to a 78. 78 overall, 34 years old. That is a, that's a guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on here for this video to see where things go because now that he's... You know, he's up there, and we have guys like K.J. Osborne. We have Whiting, who didn't get a lot of playing time. Wilcox, who I want to get more playing time. He's he's due $14.6 million, and we can get rid of him and save 12. So that that's, depending on what happens here in the re-signs, that might be something we have to do here. Our tight ends are pretty secure. Irv Smith and Derek Barnes. I love Tyler Conklin. As long as he's serviceable, he'll probably stay, so I don't think we're going to be touching tight ends at all this offseason. Christian Derrissaw is a guy that I'm really curious about seeing what happens in offseason because he's been that one spot where we really haven't been able to get much out of, and now with him being 25, he's still only a 75 overall without all this extra morale boost and stuff. You, know, you just wonder if, if he's going to be able to really become that so solid left tackle. Of course, our left guard position is held down for quite some time. And I like Connor McGovern as a backup. Garrett Bradbury, while getting up there, he is still serviceable and he is very worthy of, of starting for us. Mason Cole is also a decent backup for him. Lakin Tomlinson, I wonder, did he... No, he didn't lose anything. Wow, okay. That's cool. This is one thing, too. A lot of guys, when they play Madden, they want to get rid of all of the older players. And because of the regression system, which I understand. But a lot of people don't realize that these linemen, they will hold on to their ratings for much longer than that of receivers and running backs and corners, safeties, and even quarterbacks. So you can see here, Tomlinson, we've had him for two years. He hasn't dropped, he hasn't lost anything. Not a, not one rating. He's 32 years old. Just keep that in mind in your own franchises. If you're, if you're thinking about, you know, oh, this guy wants a two-year deal, He's probably going to be that same overall for, you know, the next two seasons for you. So just consider that. Don't don't just throw away the old linemen. They're very serviceable. And good linemen are hard to come by in this draft, in these drafts, and really in Madden in general. Ole Udo has really turned into a pretty solid backup for us. Brian O'Neill, our starting right tackle. I don't see him going anywhere. I will say that I was wrong about Martin Jefferson. But last year, I, was, I made comments about, I don't know if he's going to be a good fit for us, but... After this season, I really think that he is starting to come into his own. He just needed that extra boost. Now that he's got the star dev from, I think, one of his scenarios last year, this past season, I think he's going to be pretty serviceable for us moving forward. I also like Randy Barrett quite a bit. He filled in really well in the small time we got to see him for DJ Wanham, which may end up costing DJ Wanham his job. Now that they're both the same overall, Wanham is due for a new contract. Barrett is under contract, so I, I'm probably just going to let DJ Wanham go. Michael Pierce did get hit with some regression. He's down a little bit. He lost 15 to his attributes, 1 to injury, 5 to play rec, 2 to tackle, 5 to block shedding, 1 to pursuit, and 1 to speed. He's still a very, very good D tackle at 86 overall, so I'm hoping he lets us re-sign for a little bit cheaper. And if he does, I'll, I'll consider bringing him back, even though I do like Devontae Coleman. Come on superstar oh these guys finally had their hidden developments rolled the guys who didn't play enough he's a superstar oh dang i remember him being hidden dev but i i didn't i forgot about that we gotta see who else was we have a couple i think aj alexander was also hidden so we got a superstar d tackle in the draft last year Oh boy, that sort of changes things, guys. Man, I don't know. I mean, he's only a 72, but I gotta get this guy in the field somehow. Boy, that, that just made things a lot more interesting. 
Devontae Coleman ends up being a superstar dev D tackle. That's some awesome news, man. I'm really excited now for Devontae Coleman. Him and Donovan Turner are sort of the future at this position. I don't know who Brandon Collins is. Did I sign him? Anthony Barr. He's down to a 74 now. He didn't lose a whole lot. One to tackle, one to play rec, one to injury, three to play rec. Oh, he lost four. Dang, why do they have to put it? Why do they have to put it separate like that? <laughs> okay. So he ended up losing four to tackle, four to play rec, one to injury, three to zone coverage, and one to pursuit. Oh wow. Eric Kendricks dropped hard. Sheesh. He lost 27, but he lost him in key categories. He lost his he went down to star from superstar. He lost three to tackle, two to zone, six to pursuit, four to play rec, three to block shed, five to awareness, three to injury, and one to acceleration. Man, he really fell off. I mean, he's still a very good linebacker, but sheesh. So AJ Alexander ends up being star dev after his... Uh, his hidden development went away, which honestly, I was. I'm just happy we got one superstar out of Devontae Coleman. That's that's awesome. AJ Alexander still star. That's still awesome. It's still something he can build off of. Antoine Whitehead, one of our first picks, is still at normal. He's he's regressing slowly, but it just seems like we can't get him to that next level. I'm hoping that we can get him there because we really aren't gonna be able to find anybody better than him at his age and his overall corners i think we are pretty set at corner now i mean mike hughes is, is got he got the shutdown corner option cam dantzler is a superstar connor McElroy has turned into a really good nickel corner for us we have already burns i don't think we're going to resign because i want jason reddick to play more and this guy is just, I don't even know who that guy is. Xavier Woods also took a hit from the regression. Now that he's 29 years old, three to awareness, two to injury, one to pursuit, three to zone, one to awareness. So, so four or two awareness total. So he's down to a 76 now. And now he's not even a zone guy. Dang. Cameron Bynum still here, 26 years old, 76 overall, 73 before or after the, um, the morale stuff falls off. Now Josh Metellus is our starting safety. So in all reality, we could have a solid team minus a strong safety that we need to replace. Or what we could do is we could blow this whole thing up. We could let go of Kendricks. We could let go of Barr. We could let go of Pierce. We could release Adam Thielen and just start from scratch. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do yet. I feel like I need to see what these contracts are going to be and what the free agency pool looks like before I make that call. Just a quick reminder of what we're working with this year in the draft. We have the first overall, the first round pick at 31, the second round pick at 31. We have a third from the Giants along with our third, a fourth from the Rams along with our fourth. We have the fifth for Buffalo, two sixths and two sevenths. So we have a decent amount of picks throughout the rounds. I wish we had a little bit more top heavy picks, but who knows maybe we can try to swing a trade to get like another i don't know second or early third if we we have a player or two there that we like we've seen the roster we know what's what's ahead of us now let's see this this re-sign stage and see what we're dealing with so first and foremost david wallace is getting a contract i like the guy i can't even fault him for the kicks that were made because you know he's just it's not his fault that Madden is stupid. We're going to give him a two-year contract. Bring it up a little bit. There we go. 6.92. Pretty good contract for a kicker. And he accepts. Michael Pierce, Eric Kendricks, CJ Ham. I know CJ Ham is not coming back. I'm sorry. I love CJ, but it's time for him to go. We have Walden now. I'm thinking of re-signing Kenny Young as just a, a solid fill-in role player. But really, a lot of these guys can go. I just, I don't think that he's worth, um, I just really don't think he's worth the contract now that Randy Barrett is here. He's 26. We have, we have Patrick Jones, who I think is somebody that we can still develop a little bit more. So I think this is the end of the road for DJ Wanham in Minnesota. Artie Burns, 
We're not gonna, we're not gonna sign you, bud. Sorry. Kenny Young. What did Kenny Young lose? Did he lose anything? No, he didn't. We'll, we'll re-sign him if I decide not to sign Barr or Kendricks. And I really have to stop putting this off. So, Anthony Barr is still a superstar, uh, X-Factor. He wants two years for $10.7 I don't think I can do that. He's a 74 overall right now, which would put him at about 5 to $6 million for the first year. And then the second year, what's he going to be, a 70, a 71, counting five or six against the cap? I would rather us bring in somebody else to try and, you know, build for the future. So for that reason, Anthony Barr is no longer a Viking. Now this contract I can get behind for Michael Pierce. One year, 9.8 million, he's an 86 overall, he barely lost anything. Let's go ahead and bring him back. Oh, and he doesn't want to sign with us? Bro, I just overpaid you, man. Okay, well apparently Michael Pierce doesn't want to sign with us. Okay, um, <laughs> last one, and this is another tough one for me. Two years, $18 million. Kendricks, you can't even give us a hometown discount, man. And we're gonna have to let him go, guys. I can't, I'm not giving him, I'm not giving him 9 million a year. I'm not doing that. I can, I can let AJ Alexander take over and grow him. I could draft a linebacker. I can maybe find one in free agency. I'm not paying this man 9 million. Let's just try. We're just gonna try. We're gonna try to give him a one year. And I know I'm going to lowball the crap out of him. I'm going to do one year, 8.5. That's the only offer I'm giving you, man. And he's he's not interested in it. Okay, so it looks like we're cleaning house, guys. Can we at least get Kenny Young back as a backup? Nobody wants to sign. Everybody wants out now. We lose one big game in the Super Bowl, and now everybody wants to leave. All right, well, I guess we're going into rebuild mode. None of our guys want to re-sign, at least not for the contracts that I'm willing to pay. We can now take a look and see what some of these where some of these guys are sitting when it comes to their stories, right? I want to be more inclusive when it comes to this draft stuff. So it's, it's, it's an experience that everybody can sort of go through and like everybody can understand the draft and where we're sitting. So to start things off here at the quarterbacks, even though we're not looking at quarterbacks, they are going to be guys we face. Daniel Matias is the top rated cornerback. He ended up breaking a bunch of records at LSU, uh, one of them being a single game passing record or single game passing touchdown record. Uh, Joshua Clifton, he actually did not have any story. Zach Hardeman did get a story and his was, he won the best quarterback in college football award. Joey Owens was actually named the Heisman winner which obviously you can see there shot his draft stock up. Caleb Mobley had a very bad combine and he's plummeting down the boards now after I guess his mechanics were all over the place. Nothing looked good. He just looked out of sync completely. So his draft stock is really hurt right now. Brian Meyer was injured before the, the combine and did not perform. For running backs, we had a few big stories. So Sharif Norris here, the top running back, ended up winning best running back award. The next one is Roy Johnson. He got the really big quad story again. I, I don't understand why they keep putting that in here. Halfback Clyde Bryant here out of Syracuse had a very poor all-star game. He could not find any lanes, couldn't find any yards. And when other running backs participated with the same line, they were able to find some success, which has people doubting whether or not he's he's able to find the lanes and able to complete runs properly. Rayshon Givens also had a poor final game. He didn't he wasn't in the All-Star game, but his last game at Syracuse was not very good. And now he's also tumbling down the draft board. Ty Hayward here was actually one of the most recent stories. He had a really good combine, which raised his draft stock. Let's just take a look at him quick. Okay, so he had a 4-5-5-40. I'm not sure why that's considered great. Nothing else here seems to be very good. His marginal strength, solid change of direction, decent agility. 5'8", 195. You expect this guy to be sort of quick and shifty. And that, that was it. Oh, Matthew Knott, uh, which is weird to see an undrafted guy. So Matthew Knott came in heavier than expected and had a poor combine out of Clemson. So maybe he wasn't listed as undrafted at, at first, but now he is. Oh boy, a 4.76 for a 40 at a running back? Yikes, I don't think he's gonna get drafted. All right, now on to the receivers. Kentrell Lucas is the guy that 
At first I wanted because he had a bad story. And I've seen that these guys with bad stories sometimes actually have really good stories, especially the one that he had himself, which I've seen before. But he's only dropped to like the third overall best pick, so he's not gonna be able for us to sign. He did have a story though, where is it? His story was, he was the one that was kicked off of the team for missing practice. Gerald Monty was an Olympic gold medalist. This guy's like Kurt Angle of the of the NFL or something. But he doesn't even have good speed. Solid speed at best, four five for an Olympic medalist. Javier Lowry, he really impressed the scouts in his last game. He caught everything and left the scouts, you know, of course, impressed. So Dalton Morgan just had a story very recently and he had a great 40 time, one of the best in the, in the class. Got a pretty good deep route. Four, three, four, fifth best receiver out of, for combine. Timmy Peoples had a story as well. He capped off All-Star Week with several great catches and the game MVP. Single-handedly dropped multiple defensive backs stock, says his story. All right, there you go. Stephen Clay had himself uh, two stories. Um, it says, first one is about his kick returning. It says, I'd rather kick it 10 rows deep than let him return it. So you know he's got return ability. And then zero star walk on who worked his way up the depth chart. Keep doubting at your own risk are his stories. Deshaun Bernard won FCS Player of the Year Award, 6'5", 223 um, pounds. He's 23 years old, but he does have some pretty decent key ratings. B catching traffic, A catching. Not very good speed, 458. 30, yeah, he, he's just a he's just a big body guy. Kai Downing was injured as well ahead of the combine and was not able to participate. I don't even think there was a story. Tight end, for, the only one was Jonathan Middleton. He won best tight end award. Everything else, there was no stories for these guys. No stories for the offensive linemen at all. Oh, there was one for a guard. I do have Craig Whitley listed because he's only 21. Uh, based off of his weight, I'm assuming he's going to be more of an agile guy since he's 306, which is something we're looking for. And his awareness unlocked a long time ago, and he has A awareness. Combine looks pretty good. Fifth in three cones, third in 20-yard shuttle. Fourth in vertical jump, first in broad jump. 25th in bench press. He's somebody I would like to look at later in the draft. I definitely don't think he's worthy of a first-round pick. Otherwise, yeah, I'd say his projection was higher. Justin Smith is one of the top guys here. He's another younger guy, and he had some pretty good ratings, and he's the only guy who had a story. He ended up having one, which is why I think I put him down, because we don't even really need guards. But, oh no, this was not it. Questions continue around health, long history of injuries in high school and college. Oh, yikes. Okay, so uh, we're going to remove him. I do have Michael Mahone here as one of my favorites. Um... Obviously, he's from Wisconsin, but his key ratings really, really left me look, wanting to see more of him. B pass block, B run block, power, A run block, B awareness. Everything has been a solid rating for him. The only thing is lead block at C, but if he plays center, we really don't need him to run block to lead block. And look at his combine. I knew he had a lot of good ratings here, you know, before when it had the little, you know, the range. But now seeing it, he's first and second in like everything. Wow. Okay. Rounds two to three. It might be a guy we have to target. So I ended up uh, looking at Markel Ware because he's a first to second round talent. And he's he's 300 pounds, which means he could actually play defensive tackle in our system. And I see here that we've unlocked enough to know that he is a scheme fit. He's a run stopper. He didn't end up having the greatest combine. But again, if that's stacked against defensive ends, I feel like if he's moved to D tackle, it might end up you know bumping that up a little bit. So he's somebody that we could look at in the first round and could to, to replace Michael Pierce, really, to help Devontae Coleman along and get ready for Tomlinson to, to walk away and regress. So this is a guy that I was looking at for that reason, Markel Ware. And if it falls through, Trevon Cl Trayvon Clifford is another guy who could play you know, a three technique for us at 307 pounds. Terry Rhodes is another one. And that's why you see hearts on some of these bigger defensive ends because I do plan on... I would like to grab, if I can grab one of them and move him inside, that would be best. And then Jaleel McCoy is another one. We didn't get many stories, though, for defensive line this year at all. D tackles I was looking at because, again, I wasn't sure what we were going to do with Pierce, and now he's going to be gone, so we might end up having to take a D tackle. But there's a few guys here, Baldwin, Giles, Peel. 
but Giles and Peel and Baldwin and Peel, they're all scheduled to go way before we get up to the up the pick. Steve McCann set the school record for tackles for loss. He's got A awareness and A play rec. Oh boy. Man, am I gonna have to try to trade up to get one of these guys? Bryce Britt also had a story. He had an incredible combine, and everybody needs a player like him. We've heard that story before with a couple of guys, and they've all turned out pretty pretty decent. He's right behind McCann when it comes to 40-yard dash. It looks like we just don't know much about him, though, when it comes to some of the more key statistics like we do McCann. I feel like I'm going to do a, a, a video about Madden and the state of it and start doing some more how-to videos and whatnot because there's a lot of thoughts that I have about this game and the direction it's going, and I, I just I feel like I want to share it, so I might end up doing that soon. Corners, I did have some corners on my favorites list, but I don't know if we're going to be going after them for what I think that we're going to go after them for. I'm actually considering going after a corner or two to play safety, depending on how the safeties pan out, because there doesn't seem to be a lot of them this year. Kasim Watkins was one of the guys I was looking at because his man coverage is, is rather, well, not very good. I don't know what his zone coverage is, but he has B hit power and B block shedding and B awareness, which means to tell me he might be a very good zone defender and he could possibly transition to safety. He had a really good combine as well. Good speed, good bench. So Kai Luckett was the guy who was going in the good direction compared to Perry Stark, the wide receiver. And you can see he's gone up a little bit. Tim Sims is somewhere down here. Yep, way down here, day three projection. Held his own in Olympic trial runs, no doubt about speed. I wonder how fast this guy is. 4.38, okay, okay. Really good speed and, and acceleration. And he's 6.3. Might have to be a guy to check out later on in the draft. And then uh, the guy that I was just talking about actually, Kasim Watkins ha has a story. Incredibly hot commodity come draft night is what the story said. Safeties, there was no stories for safeties. But Shamir Bins is the guy that my GM told me to look at. And if you guys remember, we missed out dearly with Von Bernie last year to the Saints because I decided not to listen to my GM. And now it makes me feel like I should draft the guy they tell me to draft. So I don't know. For that reason, I have a heart on Shamir Burns, Shamir Bins. I also put one on to Joshua Rivers and George Dotson just for later round consideration. Oh, and Rasheem Darden. I like some of these taller safeties. So I did want to make sure I I have them all listed here. I believe I also put one on somebody that's way down here too. Maybe it's strong safety because they look like they could be a linebacker. Okay, Clint Monty. Kevin Odding is one, 223 pounds. And then Sheldon, Sheldon Hitchens, 225. Those guys could pretty much play linebacker. Tyreek Stamper, there's a few of them. So... Somebody to, to look at later on in the draft. Definitely not going to be draft worthy, like, you know, anywhere between before like the sixth round, but something to look at for some of these guys. All right. I've done a lot of talking about this draft class. Um, we already know who we are not getting back. Let's go ahead and get to this free agency and see what we have available to us. Anthony Barr, you cannot go to the Saints, man. That would be like a rule of some sort against the Vikings handbook. You can't go to the Saints. Oh, Isaiah Simmons is available. Guys, guys. I think I got to sign Isaiah Simmons. 6'4", 238 pounds. I'm sure everybody who plays Madden knows him. This is the perfect linebacker for us. This is like an Anthony Barr replacement, but better pass coverage. I gotta, I gotta bring him in. I have to. Let's see. Oh man, we're not even close. We're gonna have to severely pay for this guy. We're really gonna have to pay for him if we want him here. I'm gonna come back to him. Nobody's, nobody's bid on Eric Kendricks. Nobody. I could bid my one year 8.5 again that you decided to turn down. Let's just throw it out there. Let's just throw it out there. You don't have to take it, man. You don't have to. But that's what I'm willing to pay you. One year, 8.55. But I want Simmons. That's that's the one guy that I really want. Really isn't a whole lot of guys available that fit our system. 
That's the problem. Everybody's, all of these outside linebackers seem to be just edge rushers now. Why are you 220 pounds and you're a speed rusher, bro? Like, how? Tell me that. I do feel that we need to bring in at least one linebacker aside from the ones I'm targeting right now. There isn't many guys that are jumping off the page at me right here. Could bring in Demario Davis and just be like a... I could, I could do that. I could bring in Demario Davis. He could sort of stand in as our Eric Kendricks, and then we could put all of our money towards bringing in Isaiah Simmons. This guy's asking for so much less money. You know? Speaking of say... Oh. Oh, what a season for us to lose Harrison Smith. Jeremy Chin is in free agency? And Cameron Curl, 25 years old, 84 overall. He's a zone guy, which honestly would work out well because we could move Xavier Woods to strong safety now that he's a run support type of player. And we could let Cameron Curl play free safety. This is a this could be a big sign. What about Jeremy Chin? 6'3, 221 pounds. Tell me why I shouldn't sign him and move him to linebacker. So if we go after Jeremy Chin for four years for 30, I'm already up there. But if we want to offer him, we would end up having to pay five years, 33.1 million to Cameron Curl to get him to consider coming to us instead of the Saints, which doesn't even make sense either. The Saints just drafted Von Bernie. They, he wasn't even starting because of the other safety they had. Why do they need so many safeties? Man, forget the Saints, man. I hate them. Who do we want to go after? So really this whole this whole thing is gonna come down to like two players, four guys. Make or break our, our, our free agency here. Man, we're not even close to this guy though. Just to move past the Saints, we would have to pay him a four year, $51 million contract. Yikes, or not the Saints, the Chiefs. When I could, what if, what if instead I tried to get both of these guys, right? Because Jeremy Chin played linebacker on and off for Carolina. What if I get Curl and Chin? I take away my offer on Simmons, right? Bring back Kendricks, and then we could move Jeremy Chin to linebacker. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't need him to rush the passer. We need him to 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 cover and help with these tight ends. And he can do that. He's got good pursuit for that. He's got good hit power for it. Maybe I put this money into these the safeties, move one of them to outside linebacker, let Isaiah Simmons go to the Chiefs. I mean, I don't know what else to do. I, I can't pay fifty million to this guy when I can pay thirty to him. You know, that would really shore up our defense for years. Then we would just have to worry about replacing Xavier Woods, which we could still bring in a linebacker. Plus, it would leave us extra money, 21 million still after that. So let's let's do that. We're gonna do that. We're we're gonna let Isaiah Simmons go to the Chiefs. I don't he they have such a run on everybody. I don't want to pay him over 50 million. He's only an 82 overall. So that's 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 pretty much our first week. We remove our, our option on Isaiah Simmons. We Go after Jeremy Chin to play our outside linebacker role that Anthony Barr just left. We bring in Cameron Curl to play safety alongside Xavier Woods. And we bring back Eric Kendricks on a one-year deal for $9 million. That would keep our defense intact while we can hopefully try to build more through the draft before having to dive deep into free agency. I forgot all about Michael Pierce, guys. I almost completely forgot about Michael Pierce. How did I almost do that? Are we even close to being able to sign him though? Oh, we are. We don't even have to up his contract that much. This would really keep um, our defense really intact. But I don't know, man. I don't know, maybe we, maybe we should just let him go. Now that Coleman's a superstar, I feel stupid for wasting him on the, you know, I know he's only a 72, but okay. Okay, we got almost everybody. Look at that. We got Cameron Curl. We get Jeremy Chin and oh, Michael Pierce rejected our offer. Dang. Oh, man. Well, 
You, you win some, you lose some. I see that Kendrick still hasn't made a decision. Is he not signing with us, or is is he taking other? Oh, now the now everybody's coming into play for him. Swift goes to the Jets. Dylan goes to the Washington Football Team. Edwards to the Bears. McKissick to Kansas City. And now it's past anybody we care about. Corey Davis going to the Saints. Gabriel Davis goes to the Falcons. Jalen Rieger. Well, he just failed in Philly. He's going to the Bucks. Isaiah Coulter is going to the Browns. Tyron Smith ends up going to the Titans. Austin Jackson going to the Falcons. Nothing really too noteworthy here. Michael Pierce also went to the Falcons. Everybody's going to the Falcons. Leonard William to Denver. Carl Lawson to Dallas. Anthony Barr went to the Saints. You traitor. You traitor. And if anybody's under wondering why I'm saying that, you're probably not a Vikings fan, which is okay. But there is a long-standing history between the Saints and the Vikings. Isaiah Simmons went to the Chiefs, of course. Bryce Hall went to the Saints. Benton also went to the Saints. I didn't even see Jaden Norris in free agency, but I wasn't looking that far down. Odell Beckham might go to the Lions. Oh, come on. Or the Dolphins. Either team is bad, in my opinion. I don't like them. Okay, so I decided to move Jeremy Chin to right outside linebacker because that's where the pass coverage one always usually stays. And I moved Whitehead over to the left outside linebacker spot since he's tied with pass coverage and run stopping and run stopping being the, the fit over on that side. So now we have all of our linebackers are pretty much in place. And that leaves Cameron Curl. I could move Xavier Woods to strong safety. Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna pass on Kendricks as well, guys. We already got rid of, we already cleaned house with everybody else. We lost out on Michael Pierce. I could see if we brought Pierce back, you know, have him and Kendricks, but now that Pierce decided to go elsewhere, we know that this defense is gonna have to be in somewhat of a rebuild. We can, we can avoid going after linebackers now in this draft. Let AJ Alexander and Whitehead continue to get better. Have Jeremy Chin carry our linebacker core. Cameron Curl is back there to help us alongside Woods to replace Harrison Smith. Our corners are good. Maybe draft one or bring a, a low-level, you know, mid-tier guy in for depth, like we did with Artie Burns last year. And then maybe go and we can we can key in on D tackle. So either one of those DNs like Markel Ware or one of the D tackles if they fall to us on the board. And then also we can attack left tackle. So D tackle, left tackle, and wide receiver would be our our major hitting points and then sta safety as well if it falls to us and it makes sense at the time so after reviewing the roster the way after our couple of signings here i've decided that we're just going to take away the offer on eric kendricks um two years 20 million is just more than i really want to spend on him i don't foresee us using him for more than a season and i'd have to pay him almost probably close to 15 or 16 million for one year just to get up to where the Cardinals and Giants are picking from and now like I said we've already lost out on Michael Pierce which is somebody we're going after we decided to let Anthony Barr go Harrison Smith has retired um, I think I think it's just time for us to reset this whole defense so we're gonna go ahead and withdraw offer from Eric Kendricks Demario Davis is still an option he only wants a year I would probably still start AJ Alexander over him even though he's a better overall right now but he would give us that veteran presence that we really are looking for on defense that we just lost out on pretty much every veteran we still have left. We're going to offer Demario Davis a one-year contract. I think our best bet here is going to end up being Jalen Smith, which would be good to have some veterans there still. But he wants a two-year. I wonder if I can offer him a one-year. Yeah, he'll, he might take that. So we bring in these two guys we can move jalen smith outside since he does have pass coverage abilities and then demario davis would be between him and alexander to start for the season white is really only a 74. that overall boost was really playing tricks with my head definitely not going to bring eli apple in after his week what do, who does this guy really think he is like i know you guys are probably following the nfl like who does this guy really think he is look at this look at this guy's overall this is the guy that's you know, crapping on all of these teams that he failed off of. 
I just think that's hilarious. Uh, so I think that we are going to bring back Artie Burns, which is a little surprising to me because I decided to release him, but now it seems like he is the best option for us. Let's offer him another contract. So give us some depth. We will have Reddick start ahead of him, though, this time around. So him and McElroy can can uh, continue progressing. Our safeties are good. We have our linebackers now as long as they sign. DJ Wanham, you're going to go to Seattle? Man, there's certain t teams outside of the division that you just can't go to. Seattle is one of them along with the Saints. These guys, no loyalty. Just because I cut them. I think we're going to have to just draft somebody for D-tackle. I think that's what the route will take there. Okay, so that was our second our second free agency. I'm just curious to see if some of these guys that I'm looking at, like Kasim Watkins was a guy that I was hoping to get for safety. But now that we have Curl, I really don't think corner is something we even need to look at. So that's that's okay. I was actually hoping to move, move him to safety instead of having him play corner. But I want to see... Oh, McCann's going early. Dang. Bryce Britt is also going early. The only couple of linebackers that are worthy worth anything on this in this draft, it seems, so far. Markel Ware is even going early. Come on, man. I was really hoping that he would fall to us and we could we could take him. So I feel like he'd be a good fit for us. Man, that's really unfortunate. I mean, obviously, it's not a dead dead giveaway that he's going, but like I've said in the past, these mock drafts pretty much tell you who's going to be taken and when. It doesn't leave much of the imagination. So it looks like we would have, we could, we could honestly, we could take that center that I was looking at. He would be a guy that's available for us at this spot, and it'd probably be the best spot to take him at. Let's go ahead and simulate past this. And see if we get any of these leftover, you know, depth guys that I'm that we're looking to sign. Okay, so we get both the linebackers and the corner. Pretty sure that was everybody. Private workouts time. Yes, we are gonna do the private workouts. Hopefully we can get some we can get some more information on some key players here. I wanna go to the wide receivers. Um I want to learn more about this Stephen Clay guy. This is the guy that had the two stories. The one that said, don't kick it to him because so he's a good returner. And also he had the story where keep doubting him. I, I just like his story. So I'm going to pick him as one. Um, as I really want to see more on Michael Mahone. So we're going to choose him. And then I'd like to get more info on Markel Ware. I want to see where he's at. So those are the three that we're going to focus on. And all three of those are worthy, I think, of our first round pick at this point. I mean, obviously, where is? We might not even be able to get him. But if he's that good, I might consider trading up in the first to try to get him. Before we get to the draft and looking at the players one last time, let's take a look here around the league and see who all signed where. So there wasn't much for quarterbacks here. It looks like the Falcons signed not only Nick Mullins, but Kyle Allen. I'm expecting them to go with a quarterback in the draft. It has them taking Joshua Clifton, the top guy, one of the top guys next to Matias. And maybe a battle between these guys as veterans. I'm not sure. And they signed Jacob Eason. See, this is another thing that Madden does horribly. You don't need to sign three quarterbacks in one free agency period, Madden. Like, come on, guys. DeAndre Swift, we already knew, went to the Jets, which is something I'm not very a big fan of because I know that they already had Michael Carter and I believe they had somebody else there as well. So I'm not 100% sure why they decided to sign him. I believe he's probably the highest overall out of them. But still, it just uh, to me, it doesn't make, didn't make much sense. Leonard Fournette ends up going to the Ravens. That's actually a really good fit to me. Sony Michelle goes to the Seahawks. That's another good fit. Zach Moss goes to the Chiefs. Tariq Cohen going to the Steelers. Jamal Williams going to Denver to, to run alongside uh, um, Javante Williams. Odell ends up signing with the Lions. So Odell Beckham Jr. is now going to be somebody we have to look out for. They already have a pretty good receiving core as well with Cortland Sutton and um, Jacoby Myers. Now they're going to add Beckham to that list. Devin Duvernay goes to the Raiders. That fits. He's very fast and nothing else. <laughs> that's, that's the most Raiders signing ever. 
Brian Edwards ended up going to the Bills. Auden Tate to the Panthers. Van Jefferson to the Patriots. Tyler Johnson to the Browns. Man, why, how did I not see him? I could have signed him. It's a Minnesota guy. We didn't need him anyway. Kiki Cutie goes to the Broncos. Donovan Peoples-Jones goes back to the Browns. Denzel Mims to the Patriots. KJ Hamler and Marquez. Oh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Was he on Green Bay last year? I don't think he was. Nick Boyle to the Cardinals. That's about the only noteworthy one there. We already saw where those guys went. Oh, actually, no. Demarcus Lawrence going to the Bills must be new because I'm pretty sure he was available the last time I was looking at signing somebody. So he goes to the Bills. Michael Pierce, of course, we know, goes to the Falcons. DJ Jones goes to the Panthers. Tristan Hill to the Broncos. Saw those guys. Yeah, all of these were pretty much stuff we already saw. Oh, Mike, Marcus Peters goes to the Broncos. Slay. Slay now to the Bears. Hayward to the Bears. Okay. Micah Hyde to the Eagles. Ashton Davis goes to Buffalo. Okay. Justin Tucker find home. Yep, he goes to the Saints too. Everybody went to the Saints. Well, that's it for the free agency. We come out with improving our defense. Our offense stays the same, but our defense got one point better during our free agency spending, which is awesome. They still have the Jets taking Matias. I have to check on Zach Wilson and see if there's a real reason for that. Same with the Lions. I mean, not saying that Lucas isn't a, a great option, but if they just signed Odell Beckham, they have Jacoby Myers, they have Cortland Sutton, you would think that they would actually go in another direction that they'd help them because the Lions need a lot of help. Now they have Steve McCann going number eight. Jeez. Gerald Monty falling down a little bit, it looks like. They had him going way, and Markwell, Markel Ware still there. Oh, we got 100% completion on him, though. Okay, we got to go and check this out, because it looks like we got some guys. Okay, so we did the wide receiver. Come on, tell me we got something. We got nothing on him. Madden, you're horrible. You suck. Okay, you suck. You really do. You really, really, truly, truly suck. And I hate you. How does this, how, how is this broken? It's a brand new feature. You think you would have taken the time to at least check if your new feature was working or not. Like the only feature we were given this year. Man, it's just, team is just horrible. And Mahone, nothing for Mahone either. I, I just, I can't with this game, man. I really can't. Like, it's just so pathetic. Okay, Markel Ware, we at least get something out of him. He had a really good combine, it looks like. Finesse move is a C, but really we don't need him to have that. Block shedding is an A, that's huge. Our move B, play rec and awareness both B. Pursuit, stamina and tackle all A along with impact block. I really like this guy. I feel like I wanna draft him. Move up to grab him, move him to D tackle. And then we have him and Devontae Coleman going forward once Tomlinson ends up leaving. I think that'd be a good move. I would I would like to look more into Mahone because he had such a great combine. But without knowing enough about him, I don't even know if he's good enough to be drafted there. You know? Maybe we need to get another second round pick and try to, to get him as well. Him or Stephen Clay. I, I just don't know enough about him, but some of these stories that I got on Clay makes me want to draft him. Okay, so we have seen what happened throughout free agency. We've got a few really nice pieces for our new defense. I want to take one more peek at our roster, though, and I want to see if there is any kind of trade bait that we can try to muster up to get us some better positions in the draft. And the first one I want to look at is running back. And there's one guy that stands out to me that we really don't use, and... Uh, not really any point in keeping. And that's Kenny Nwangu. We use him on kick return and that's about it. Outside of him having a lot of speed, he really does not serve too much of a purpose here. And I, and I like him in real life and I, I hope that he can develop, you know, for the Vikings in that respect. But in our series here, 
He just does not serve much of a purpose. We have Antoine Glover now. Madison is the guy as of as of now. We have Nelson, who I really want to build up. And, of course, Montel Strickland behind him. So Kenny Nwangu is a guy that we could really try to use to move up in the draft. The question is if there's any interest anywhere. Just taking a look here at the running back forecast for the... Okay, so... The Chargers are another team that we could look at. Where did they finish? 14. That wouldn't be a bad spot. If we could trade up to the 14th spot, that would be that would be pretty good. I'm just curious what the um what we would be looking at for for interest. If we were to swap our 31 for their 14 and give them Kenny Nwangu in, in exchange. He's a 75 overall running back. And right now, their their second back is a 67 overall. Let's give it a shot, though. Let's try it. Let's try to just take Nwangu and our 31st pick and try to move up to the 14th spot. Here just goes nothing. And no. Not enough value. Which, you know, it makes sense. So now let's start back at the Chargers here. Oh, that's not what I And uh, let's, let's look at some other teams. No, 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 no. Aha. Uh -huh. Where did they finish? 11. So that's going to be even harder to get. We need actually something closer to the 20th spot. And this is, oh, let's look here too. See, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they, why would the Jets be going after a quarterback when they have an 82 or 84 without the morale dump superstar quarterback? What is, what is his, con, what is his, so this year he had 24 touchdowns to 16 interceptions, back-to-back -back years at 16 picks, but this is the first year that he had less than 30 touchdowns. He hasn't had the greatest uh, career, but this is also the Jets we're talking about here. You know, this isn't like, you know, he's he's on a team that that can that has a lot of of stuff to, to cheer for. I mean, they had that one sort of Cinderella year where they pushed for a playoff seating, but that was that was pretty much it. So I, I think I'm gonna have to end up going on the Jets to make sure they don't take a quarterback first overall. I'm sure there's another guy up there that I could take for them. That would make more sense. We'll figure that out afterwards. But we can't do the running back there. Can't do it. I mean, they have two older guys here, but for one, I'm not going to trade with the Lions. I'm just not. I'm not trading with the Packers. No, they have Chuba Hubbard there. They wouldn't do that. They have a lot of running backs. They always do. No. No, that wouldn't make sense. No. No, that wouldn't even make sense either, I don't think. Actually, I might. So I don't know if there would be much interest in him for the Saints. None for the Seahawks. None for them. None for them. They have Oscar Pitts now, too. Okay, so it looks like we are back to potentially the Bills, which I don't think we can do that. I just, there's weights. I think we, if, we if we're going to trade, we have to do it with the Chargers. Because it, it makes sense. They need another running back. But the question is, what else do we have to give up to get up there? You know? If we can find another player to take from them, I could give up another draft pick. You know, maybe a mid-round pick. Something like that. Oh, they're not even close. Last chance. I'm going to try to do just this fourth, though. The 101. If this doesn't work, I think we're SOL. Yeah, it don't work. I would really like to move up in the second... So I don't want to actually, well, while we're here with them, let's at least see if we can move up to in their second spot. Cause I do want to move up in the second to try and get one of the other players that I'm looking at right now. So what if we offer second and a fifth to get up their second spot? There we go. Look at that. Perfect. That's worth it to me. We move up almost 20 spots. 17 spots in the second round. That's huge. Okay, so now we have we have a better positioning on the on the uh, second round pick. 
We're about mid-second round pick right now. We have, obviously, our the first round pick. I just wish we could tr find a way. Okay, who, who was that team that was interested in Nwangu, but it was like pick 21? The Saints. Are the Saints interested in Nwangu? They are very interested. Ooh. Ooh. This might get interesting. So we move up 10 spots in the first, and we get their fourth round pick, and then we give them Kenny Nwangu. Oh, man. I really thought they were going to go for that. Can we get our fifth back? Well, not our fifth, but a fifth? Nope. Okay. Okay. By itself? Oh, come on. Okay, so I lied. It wasn't It wasn't a guarantee to go through. But it's very, very close. I think if I add this bottom here seventh, it'll push it over the edge. Oh, my God. How close do you have to be? Okay. Final offer to get the pick. Kenny Nwangu, our first round pick at 31, and our seventh, our one of our seventh rounders, our earlier seventh round pick, just for their first round pick to move up 10 spots. And we get it. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we are in business. Our our draft now looks a lot different. So we gave up a fifth, and we've also given up our one of our sevenths and uh did we give up anything last next year no we did not okay and we gave up kenny nwangu to get new orleans first round pick at 21 so we move up 10 spots in the first then we also moved up 17 spots in the second to get the Chargers second round pick i still want to move up but i think now we can move up a lot easier to the chargers all we really have to do now is we could offer the first we just got and maybe the fourth from LA or our fourth straight up to move up to 14 with the Chargers. So the 21st overall pick, a fourth rounder this year and Oli Udo to get their 14th pick. So really they're falling back seven spots. This is a, I think a really good trade. I, I think that I'm actually on the losing end of this one. They're getting an extra draft pick and they're getting a quality, a quality lineman out of it. So let's see if they take it. Oh, oh my gosh. That was so close. Okay, and finally, we get the trade to go through. It took us uh, some extra value on my part. First round pick this year, third round pick this year, and Oli Udo in exchange for the Chargers first round pick at 14 and now we have flipped our position in the first round and in the second round we somehow we ended up with the chargers first and second round pick had to do a few trades around but we get the job done look at our draft picks now we have the pick 14 pick 46 75 101 and 127 what i would like to do is i would like to trade this fourth and maybe some of these six and try to get another third and once we do that I think I'll be happy to go to the draft. Right there, we just, <laughs> how easy was that? I give up a, our our later fourth and two sixths to get a, another third round pick from which we just lost. And now our trade is, or our draft is much lighter, but much more, much more in our favor. Now we have the first, uh, 14th, the 46th, the 75th, the 86th, and the 101st. But then we just have nothing until the seventh round. Jump over to the Jets here. And let's pick this player. They could take a quarterback. They could take a wide receiver, but they really don't need one of them. They really don't need a, a lineman. They don't need a quarterback. Stefan Ridgeway is probably was really like the best option. That or Lance Moreland. Lance Moreland is probably the best bet for them. He's got elite acceleration, good speed, really good skills. So we're gonna go ahead and I know I'm reaching here. I know, I get it. Oh, okay. I wonder if I can trade back for them. Yeah, 
Let's see what the offers are. Is there any that are really close here? Because I don't want them to miss out on Moreland either. That would be a good move. The Lions would be a good pick, but now I'm concerned that the Lions trading up would just make it that much more difficult for... Now that then the Lions are going to... I would guarantee you the Lions are going to take a quarterback and just screw the whole situation up. But this is the best move. Maybe the Lions just want to come up and get Kentra Lucas. Um, we're just going to take this one. Yeah, we're going to accept this offer. So I traded back with the Lions for the Jets. So let's see who the Lions take first overall. I really hope they don't take a quarterback and screw that up. I can't even I can't even jump on them now. If I jump on them now, I'm not going to be able to pick. They do. <laughs> this, this game is just dumb as hell. Why would you take a quarterback? Does Madden, like, is there any way to just fix this with Madden? Like, it's, you can have them read the roster. They just drafted a quarterback. God, Lee. Just, just so stupid. Just such a waste of time. Joshua Clifton goes, that's going to be interesting because the, the Falcons really needed a quarterback. So, that's I, I can't wait to see what he turns out to be and now the Jets pick so let's go back to the Jets here oh hidden dev very nice 95 acceleration 92 speed awesome that's gonna help the Jets out a lot okay so now we we got done with that portion and now we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna go through these picks and get to our pick here so next up is the Broncos at pick four and they are gonna go with Kentrell Lucas the wide receiver which makes sense because they actually got rid of Tim Patrick. So now it's it's um, Jerry Judy, Zeke Cooper, and now Kentrell Lucas. And they are going to take Eric Cook, the right guard. Now the Bills, they also go quarterback. The Bills just spent their first round pick on a quarterback when they have a 90-something overall Josh Allen. This is insane. The Cardinals take Steven Ridgeway from Oregon State, the outside linebacker. Now the Bengals are up next. They also have a new coach this year. And they're going to take Steve McCann, the middle linebacker from Ole Miss. The Bucks. they take Kenya Beckett, the left end. The Colts take Stephon Billups from Wake Forest, the right end. The Giants going outside linebacker with Dean Coleman out of LSU. The Steelers take Kasim Watkins, the corner that I was hoping us for us to be able to get. And the Texans take Aaron Davidson, left end, which leaves us here at pick 14. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Gerald Monty. I could take another receiver. We'll see what else is here. We have a lot of receivers. Javier Lowry is also here. I don't need an interior lineman this early. I definitely don't need a halfback. Baldwin, Giles, Lynch, and Markel Ware. All three of them are here for, for me to take. We can fill in this spot here. Now that I know that between all these guys, I decided on Markel Ware since I know who he is. Let's see if there's anything decent for a trade down right now. Seattle for a third and six next year move down one spot so let's take the seahawks offer here they take gerald monty the wide receiver which you know it was somebody i looked at but i think d tackle is a much bigger need patriots oh the patriots are offering it'll be a third this year and a, a seventh next year or we could take the patriots which is a fourth next year and a fifth next year so if we wait on those two picks, this is actually almost a better pick for us, I believe. You know what? We're going to take it. We can always get a fifth next year. We can always do that with, with trading down later if we get our guys. So let's take the Eagles here. We're going to move down two picks. Javier Lowry, another wide receiver, which we decided not to take a wide receiver anyway. We're already we're on that wavelength. And Bryce Britt. Okay, so here we are sitting at 17. We've already gotten a bunch of better picks for us, and we still can take our guy here. And I'm going to look at trading down again because that's just what I do. Okay, I'm, I got to stop. I could just sit here and just take all these picks all day long. I got to stop. I can't be taking all these picks from everybody. Let's just go ahead and take our guy right now. Yeah, make our selection. Let's go and take Markel Ware, and we get a hidden dev. Awesome. 80 speed, 84 acceleration. That's going to be sweet at D tackle. 80 speed, 81 acceleration, 80 agility, 73 change of direction, and he has 84 strength. That is going to be awesome to have at D tackle. 
The Packers go Lamar Hammond at right tackle. The Bears go, oh, look at that. They go Antoine Giles. So now we'll get to see if we made the right decision or not. One of the D tackles went off the board. Jaguars go Curtis Lynch at wide receiver. The Chargers now go Cam Peel. Chiefs, Felix Beckham. Vernon Newhouse, right tackle for the Raiders. The Panthers go Jonathan Middleton, the tight end. That's a nice pickup for them. He, he had a good story, too, if I'm not mistaken. He's the top tight end. They'll get him at 20, 24. The Browns, they'll go Cyril, Cyril Baldwin. 49ers are going Braxton Vickers. D tackles flying off the board heavy. We would have never gotten a D tackle at 31. Zay Black, wide receiver off the board. Chris Torrance off the board. Levi Jennings off the board. Clayton Lippett. Austin Banks, Jonathan Coles, and now we're in the second round here. I want to see, let's see who the Jets take. Jaleel McCoy, right end. Von Claxton, right outside linebacker. Joel, Joel Justice, the corner, goes to Detroit. The Broncos go Robert Greener to the right end. Sharif Norris, the first running back, finally goes off the board to the Rams. Kai Luckett, the corner, going to the Buffalo Bills. Kyler Beecham, there's another receiver going to the Cardinals. Brian Ogletree to the Bengals. Ron Cohen, another running back, this time going to the Bucks. Devontae Charles, wide receiver, going to the Colts. Jordan Weston going to the Giants. Blaine Molinero, the left tackle, going to the Steelers. And Eric Hughes going to the Texans. Texans loading up on DNs. Okay, and now it's arch selection here. Okay, so we have a few receivers still sitting here at the top. Dalton Morgan had had a great 40 time. D stamina. Come on, man. And C injury. Okay, so Morgan's off the board. Timmy Peoples, okay. What's his physicals at? Third and wide receivers. Okay, so he had a great... He's got some great speed, and he also had some amazing catches in the All-Star Week. So that's somebody who's really high on my board right now. Stephen Clay, that was the guy who had the stories about... Um, oh, he ended up being first in wide receivers now? His injury is a D, though. Oh, man, I don't really want to risk that. I think that Timmy Peoples might be the way to go. Because Stephen Clay, he's got... He's got that injury designation. Or he doesn't have an injury. Dang. I really wish his injury wasn't low, though, because he has such a good storyline. He had the good kick return, which we just got rid of our kick returner, and said, keep doubting at your own risk. So there's something to him. You know, there's something about him. I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm between Timmy Peoples and Stephen Clay. I know more about Timmy Peoples. And I haven't seen a bad one on him. 6'1", 176. Third and second, second and third. So he's got elite speed and acceleration. Great change of direction and great agility. He's pretty much tops on almost everything. His his route running is a little meh. He's got B injury, so we know his injury is better. He's got decent run blocking. Stephen Clay, on the other hand, is 5'11", same age, 183. He is very good at the shuttle and, the, and a little quicker at 40-yard dash. But it says his acceleration is solid, which must be from the, the three-cone drill being seventh. But it was third in his pro day. I think we're going to end up having to go Timmy Peoples here. Yeah, I think Timmy Peoples is the move. Final answer. I'm not, I'm not looking back anymore. He's higher on there for a reason. He doesn't have the injury scare. We're going to go Timmy Peoples. Okay, he's normal. He's got 96 speed and 95 acceleration. Gosh, I wonder what Clay had then. 97, 98, 92 change of direction. His strength is crap, but I don't care. That is a burner right there. Okay, I'm happy with that pick. Wish he would have been a dev. This is gonna be trickier because I want a player and I'm afraid to go down too far. There's one more player that I really want. That center that had top, like, top three attributes everywhere, I really want him. Michael Mahone, and he's, and he's a Wisconsin guy. This, this is the guy that I want. Top three attributes, top three in everything. 
and his physicals are actually really, really good. Him and then that left tackle that they had us taking that I think is on my board still, Craig Whitley. Third to fourth for him and two to three for Mahone. And if we have to take a corner, I would like to take Shamar Bins, Shamir Bins. But I don't know if we'll be able to get both of them. Oh, there goes Bins. He better not end up being a stud. Because I swear, two years in a row I ignore my GM and the guy goes on to be a stud. I'm going to be so mad. This is why I traded down so many times. Because I realized there might be a player or two that I really want that I want to go and get. See if that gives it to him. Oh, and they took it. Oh, right. Now the question is... What is Michael Mahone going to be? We get ourselves a hidden dev. Okay, so he has 87 strength, 76 speed, 83 acceleration. Change of direction is sort of blase, but most linemen are. 74 agility, 79 jumping. I'm happy with that pick. And he's a Wisconsin guy. And everybody knows, if you see a center in Madden's draft classes, pick in between the second and like third or fourth round and their top three top four and everything you know he's going to end up being good that's just an unfortunate fact of madden there's no way around it if i was to have a perfect draft right we got a wide receiver we got our d tackle we got our center there's only one last position that i would like to hit on and that's left tackle where is how far down the list is craig whitley is number 33 so let's sim a few um, actually, I think he might be the top. He might be the top uh, left tackle, though I believe. No, he's not. Okay. So let's get to round three and let's see where we're at at that point. I could honestly, I could trade up here and make this like my last pick of the draft and just take Whitley. Here, let me show you. Let me show you guys why I I want him. He did fall down a little bit, but he's only 21. He's got a awareness. And he's, for the, aside from 40-yard dash, he's top three in a lot of categories. And look at that. A stamina, A pass block finesse, B lead block, and A awareness. And he's sitting here in third and fourth round. So, I really want him. There we go. There we go. We are going to get Whitley. Make our selection. Let's go and get our... I'm not even going to look at everybody. I'm just going straight to him. I'm not going to second guess myself. His skills make sense. He's good at pass blocking, apparently, which is something we desperately need. And he's only 21. Craig Whitley, here we go. Another hidden depth. I'm loving this stuff right now. I'm loving... I'm really, really loving these drafts. And now, let's just get to our, our last pick here. I think we just take Tim Sims. He just had that story. He was one of the last guys. He had the Olympic trial runs. He held his own, and he had no doubt about his speed. Okay, normal dev. 6'3", 184, 93 speed, and 90... You've got to be kidding me. I'm loving this, man. We're getting so much speed right now. There we go. We just finished the draft. I think we had a very successful offseason. We got a lot of new faces coming in this year. A much, a much different looking defense, I'd say. But I'm excited for it. Oh my gosh, we killed it. Mark Ware is 74. And he's got the hidden dev. Timmy Peoples is a 77? Are you kidding me right now? 83, 80 release coming out. 92 chain, 93 kick return. I was worried about not getting kick return because of uh, Stephen Clay. Oh my God, what a steal. Michael Mahone, I, I knew he was going to be good. I just knew it. I, I mean, there's no if there's no way around it. Madden has never changed what they do. Linemen are good. If you see that they have certain things, you, it's easy to find the linemen. And Michael Mahone is, is, is that guy. Look at those stats. Awesome. And then Craig Whitley ended up being a 73 as well. <laughs> what a What a draft again, man. I'm, I love this series. Oh, what? What is pass blocking? Did, they, did I get bamboozled? His pass blocking is a 68. The only good thing at passing he is his pass block finesse. Everything else he sucks at. Okay. Uh, maybe he's not a left tackle for us. All right. Well, that was humbled me really quick. 
And then Tim Sims, who's 69. Horrible coverage, but he's got a lot of speed, I guess. Uh, let's see some of the other guys. So Dan Daniel Matias going to the Lions as a 75. He was hidden. Joshua Clifton, a 79 overall, but he is normal. But 79 overall, that's awesome for the Falcons. They had a good free agency, too. Lance Moreland, the guy I picked for the Jets, he ends up being a 75 overall. 76, but he's got a morale taking him down. Kentrell Lucas, he ends up being a 75. Very nice. Eric Cook, the top lineman. I mean, he's hidden, but he's only a 71. They had him as a top five pick. Wow. Zach Hardiman, this this was the one of the dumbest trade, the dumbest picks I've seen. And he's a 68 with morale loss, 71 without. What a waste of a pick for the Bills. Steven Ridgeway, he ends up being a 72 hidden. Steve McCann, he's 76 overall, normal. Kenya Beckett, wow, wow, that's a really good player right there, 79 overall. Steven Stefan Phillips, Dean Coleman, Kasim Watkins. This was one of the guys that I really wanted. He ends up being a 73, and he definitely could have played safety. His tackling is a little low, but his zone coverage outweighs his man quite a bit. His play recognition is pretty good. Yeah, he definitely could have played safety. Aaron Davidson, Gerald Monty. Here's another guy we were looking at. Okay, he has hidden devs, 72. 89 speed, 91 excel, not too bad. Javier Lowry, that was another guy we were looking at. He ends up having hidden dev. Bryce Britt, he has hidden dev. Everybody, these classes are loaded with hidden dev guys. Antoine Giles, he was 75 hidden. Okay, so I guess we had, um, it didn't matter. Oh, Cam Peel, and he's hidden. Cam Peel would have been a steal for us. Okay. 95 strength. I guess you win some, you lose some. I mean, I'm not I'm not upset we have wear, but to know that Cam Peel is, you know, that much better than him, that's sort of unfortunate. He was sitting right there, but I decided to go with the guy I knew. Here's Clay. He ends up being a 76, and he is normal. So about the same. 97 speed, acceleration is much worse. His injury is an 89, 85 with the thing. So I sort of got bamboozled there too. His his injury wasn't that bad. What's some punks? 75. Wow. Okay. Well, it's it has been a long enough video. We had ourselves a really good draft. We have some solid picks for next year. We had some good free agents. I can't wait for us to get to the preseason and see what we got in these some of these new guys and also dive into the free agency and see who we can find there for uh, undrafted guys. But it's been a very long video. I appreciate you guys watching so much, but this is a good spot for us to wrap. If you are new, please consider subscribing. Leave me a like and, of course, leave me a comment. And um, let me know what you guys thought of the draft. Anybody that you think we should have went? Anybody that you think maybe I shouldn't have taken where I did? Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below and, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys next time.